So you have a choice to repent or not to repent. To go to hell or to go to heaven. It's your choice. You, oh, she loves us, but she flipped us off. See the hypocrisy? So. Preach it. No. So look. The Bible says marriage is honorable among all, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. God is going to judge fornicators and adulterers that's why you got to repent you got to repent you can be forgiven in your sin but how can you say you love jesus but you don't do what he says jesus said why do you call me lord lord and not do what i say you say i love jesus but everything he said to do you disobey he's not your lord jesus is not your lord jesus is not your savior Jesus, if Jesus is not your Lord, he's not your Savior. Don't be deceived. We belong here because this is God's earth. God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus is the agenda. That's the agenda. It's Jesus. Jesus is the agenda. You, I know you don't. That's why we're here. We want you to get saved. We want you to be a real Christian, not stand up for sin and darkness. Come out from among them. Come out from among them and be suffering. Touch not the unclean thing. So, look, if you claim to be a Christian, you got to come out from among them and be separate. And then I will receive you. It says, touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. you got to be unspotted from the world. This world is wicked. This world crucified Jesus. So imagine this. Imagine, I, I say I'm a Christian, right? But I'm partying with the same people that don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in Jesus. But I'm best friends with them. So look. Yes. But we'll never win the world by being like the world. Jesus was countercultural. Jesus said, look. Look, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Jesus said, Jesus said, love not the world. He said, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, it's of the world. He said, and the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So the question is, is it the will of God for us to party with the world? No, it's not. We have to be separate. We have to come out from among them. That means, you, okay, that means when you truly repent and believe the gospel, God gives you a new heart. In John 3, 3, Jesus said you must be born again. Jesus said unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So look, if I say I'm a Christian, but I live like the world, the scripture is going to come upon me where Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. He said, be cold or hot. If you're lukewarm, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. So look, God is going to vomit out fake Christians because think about it. You're not all the way with God and you're not all the way with the devil. You're kind of with the world and with God. He's like, just even be 100% with the devil be 100% with me. If you're half in and half out, you're not going into heaven. So be all for Jesus because you can't fake it till you make it with the kingdom of God. So look, so he said legalism. Okay, but listen to this verse. It says the grace of God that brings salvation so that has appeared to all men. So the grace of God has appeared to everybody. But what does it teach us? It teaches that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. So the blood of Jesus it cleanses us from our sin Amen. so we no longer can say god I, I i'm a slave to sin i can't stop drinking i can't stop smoking i can't stop looking at porn that's no longer that that's not an excuse anymore because the blood of jesus he tore the veil in two so now the the gate has been opened we have no excuse to to partake in darkness because the Holy Spirit did not lead anybody out here to go party. There's drugs here. There's no gospel, godly music here. There's no, there's no light in there. There's pot smoking in there. So you, we got to ask ourselves, look, the Bible says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. It says, do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you unless you be a reprobate or unless you be disqualified?
and all these nonsensical things that are going to profit you nothing. They're going to profit you nothing if you die in your sins. And Jesus Christ wants you to repent. No, I'm preaching right now. You can talk to one of these other guys. There's a whole bunch of other people out here. But Jesus, he, he compels you to enter into Christ. He made the way of salvation readily available for all men. He made it readily available so that you could have rest in this world and the next. But you don't want rest when you love your sins. And there's no rest for the wicked, saith my God. You're not going to have rest even after this event. You know you're still going to be churning in your sin. You're still going to be trapped in the revolving door of your sin. Trying to convince yourself you did something with your time when you really wasted your life. You're not living for anything. You don't have a, a purpose for for puking your brains out after you get drunk and you take drugs and you fornicate and get STDs. There's no purpose to your life. Jesus is the purpose for your life. You need to glorify God. You need to glorify the one who created you, who loved you to die for you. God is extending his olive branch to you today saying, take my mercy. Take the mercy of Jesus. And if you don't receive his mercy, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed when he returns in flaming fire to take vengeance on you because you wouldn't heed the call of Jesus. You heard it. Most of you go to church. Most of you go to youth group. You grew up and you say, my daddy's a pastor. Well, you're going to stand before God and give an account for your sins. Everybody is going to have to stand before God. Even me, I'm going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And we're all going to give an account for the deeds done in the body, whether they're good or they're evil. Whether they're good or evil. But Jesus, Jesus, he's not willing that you should perish, but that you should come to the knowledge of the truth. That you, you can be reconciled to God through the uh, the flesh of his, of his body to death. And Jesus poured himself out to death. He laid down his own life for you. Laid down his own life. No man took it from him, but he laid it down of his own accord. And he rose up again the third day. He sits at the right hand of the Father. So it's reasonable. It's your reasonable service to get out of this event. Stop glorifying the devil. Stop living for yourself. Stop being selfish and living for carnality and live for Jesus. To live for the one who died and rose again. That's reasonable that you would do that. That you wouldn't, you wouldn't pour yourself out for the devil. You'd pour yourself out for Jesus. you pour yourself out for the Lord. The love of God can be shed abroad in your hearts today. You can have mercy. You can have your name wrote in heaven. You can you can be you can satisfy the wrath of God through Jesus through the blood of Christ. If you would turn to Him if you would be serious about your condition, because the, the truth is you're going to die. Ten out of ten people die. Doesn't matter if you live to be ninety and you serve the devil for all those years. Ten seconds in hell, you're going to know it was a bad choice. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shade. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. There's no purgatory. There's no second chances with Jesus. Once you die, that's it. It's appointed a man wants to die. And then the judgment. Then what? Then what? It's eternity. Eternal destruction. You're never going to be consumed in your destruction. Oh man, I fear the Lord. I fear, I fear for you. Oh, I'm terrified for you if you die in your sins. I don't want my neighbor to die and go to hell. I want my neighbor to inherit an eternal promise. I want my neighbor to inherit eternal life. Well, they gotta repent and be born again. You gotta be a former homosexual. The, the former things, you gotta put off the old man. You gotta put off the old man and put on the new man. And walk in righteousness, walk in truth. To be blameless, holy, blameless, and unreprovable in his sight. But you don't want to do that. You want to be a silly child. You want to be a silly child with all your perversion, with all your nonsense. But to the pure, all things are pure. To the pure, the Christians, the saints, all things are pure. But to the un to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Nothing is pure to you. 
Because you're a silly child of the devil. You're a silly child of the devil out here. Wasting your life. Wasting your life on sin. Wasting your life on gay. Wasting your life on fornication, on drunkenness. These are all self-evident. And you're the workers of darkness. You're the workers of darkness. You're not working righteousness out here. You're not working the goodness of God out here. No, the goodness of God would lead you to repent. The goodness of God would lead you to repent, sinners. God's goodness would compel you to repent. But you hate goodness and you love lawlessness. Oh, and because, because lawlessness is going to abound, the love of many is going to grow cold. You don't got no love. You don't even love yourself. You don't even believe yourself out here. You think you're going to do something? You think you're going to inherit eternal life living for the devil? Your boss doesn't operate that way. The police don't operate that way. What you sow is what you're going to reap. If you sow to the flesh corruption, you're going to reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit... You're going to reap life everlasting. Life everlasting. You're talking to the devil. I'm talking to sinners, but you're talking to the devil. They're in your heart. That's who told you to come here. That's who told you to come here. The devil. Because you're all of the Father. All of your Father, the devil, and his works you're doing.